Studio lighting is something that can be a little tricky to get into, especially if you've only ever shot with natural light. It can also be kind of expensive because there's a lot of equipment you might need to buy. You know, buying multiple lights, light stands, lighting modifiers, it all adds up. Today I'm going to solve both those problems by showing you three different portrait lighting setups that you can do using only one light. With one light you can still get really great results and because we're only using one light it makes everything a little bit simpler and a little bit easier to learn if you've never shot studio lighting before. Also when you start creating any lighting setup you usually want to start with one light and add one light at a time and work your way up. So a lot of what I'm going to show you today can be done with just the one light but it also works as a foundation for adding more lights if you want to get a little more complex with it. So without further ado, let's get into it. First, let's briefly get into the equipment I'm using. For my light, I'm going to be using one of my Godox MS300 strobes paired with a softbox. This is a pretty simple but versatile setup. For my camera, of course, I'm shooting on my R6 with my 24 to 70 f2.8 lens. And all the shots I'm going to show you today were shot at around 40 millimeters. For my camera settings, I have my aperture at f8, my shutter speed at 1 200th of a second, and my ISO at 100. You definitely don't need to copy these exact settings but just so you know, this is what I use. All right, lighting setup number one is called butterfly lighting because of the butterfly shape the shadow creates under the nose when you do it properly. I honestly don't really see the butterfly, but if you get this little shadow underneath your nose, that means you're doing it right. This type of lighting works really well for close-up beauty and fashion types of photos. For this, I'd recommend a diffuse light, ideally a circular shape like an octagon softbox, but a regular softbox like the one I'm using will also work fine. For this, it's important that the light is placed directly in front of the subject's face, not even a little bit to either side. The positioning for this one has to be precise, otherwise it could look really unflattering. So directly in front of your model's face, you're going to lift up the light above their head and tilt it downwards at about a 45 degree angle. Now just move it back and forth, closer and further away, until you start to see the shadows looking right. Now you definitely don't need a reflector for this setup, but it can help fill in the shadows underneath the eyes. So if you want to use a reflector for this, the setup's actually really simple because you can just get your model to hold the reflector flat right below their face, angled slightly towards them. So the light coming down from their face will hit their face and it will also hit the bounce right below them, bouncing up a little softer filling in the shadows. This next lighting setup is probably one of the most famous, popular lighting setups you'll see, and it's called Rembrandt lighting. Named after the famous painter Rembrandt who painted all of his portraits with this lighting style, this lighting setup is distinguished by the little triangle of light that you see on one of the cheeks. Anytime you see this little upside down triangle of light on the cheek, that's Rembrandt lighting. This one works with hard or soft lighting, but I still think soft lighting is a little more flattering. This is actually also the style of lighting that I use to light pretty much all of my YouTube videos. For this one, you want the light positioned in front of your subject's face, off to the side about 45 degrees. It should be ever so slightly higher than your subject, not quite as high as with the butterfly lighting, but just above eye level and tilted down a bit. You'll know it's right when you see the little upside down triangle on the cheek opposite to wherever your light's placed. If you use a really soft light, this little triangle may be harder to see, but it's always there. Now without using any bounce or fill, this lighting setup can be very dramatic because one side of the face is very bright and the other side is pretty dark. So you can add a bounce to this setup depending on what you're going for. If you want a little more casual, a little more softer flattering light, then add the bounce in. But if you like that kind of hard contrasty look, then don't add the bounce. If you do want to add a bounce though, you want to place it about 90 degrees to the side of your subject, opposite side of wherever the light is. Try and get it as close to the subject as possible without showing up in the frame. Now the light's going to bounce off of this and fill in all the shadows on the opposite side of the face, but it won't be as bright, of course, because we're bouncing the light. It's not its own light. So you're still going to be able to see some of that contrast there. It just won't be as harsh. And the last lighting setup we're looking at today is the backlight. The backlight is a very dramatic lighting setup and you probably don't want to use it all the time, but it is a very distinct look and I think it actually looks really really cool. So here's how you do it. First, position your light behind you and to the side. You want it to be mainly hitting the subject from the back, but you can also have it wrap around the face just a little bit. This type of lighting works best with the side profile of your subject because if your subject's head on, you just kind of see the silhouette of the shape of their head and there's not a whole lot of detail there. So if you get your subject to turn 90 degrees to the side, then you can get their face shape in there and you can also see their eyes a little bit. For this one, I would only add a reflector if you really need to add some more detail into your subject's face on the dark part because the whole point of this is that you don't really see a lot of detail. So I wouldn't really recommend a reflector for this one, but if you want to switch it up a little bit and add a reflector in, same kind of thing, you want this positioned on the opposite side of your subject from the light and try and angle it a little bit towards the face. Now this one might be a little tricky because you might find the reflector comes into the frame a little bit. You're gonna have to play around with that and see how it goes for you. This is kind of why I think this one works best with just the one light. And those are three lighting setups using only one light. And honestly, I think they look pretty good. They work well on their own, but they also work as foundations for more complex lighting setups. So if you have more than one light, you can start off with this and then add in a second light. In a lot of these scenarios, you can switch out the reflector for a second, slightly dimmer light 
So you can play around with that too. Also, if you have the option, I'd really recommend playing around with different lighting modifiers. If you have an octagon box or maybe an umbrella, there's a lot of different types of lighting modifiers that can change the way the light hits the face. But if you know how to do these three lighting setups, everything else is gonna become a lot easier. If you're interested in any of the gear I use for these videos on a regular basis, links in the description to my kit. You can check out my camera, my lens, my mic, everything. And if you wanna stay updated with everything I'm doing, you can also follow me on TikTok and Instagram. Those links are also in the description. I post on TikTok at least once a day and I post on Instagram, you know, sometimes. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something, please consider hitting the like button. It really helps me out. Consider subscribing if you wanna see more stuff like this. And that's about it. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.